What's up, y'all? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's about to be that time. Savage. Boom. The Crocodile Summit. We are here. We are live. All right. I want to uh, welcome my guests. All right. Special guests. JD Legend and Mr. Morge. All right. Returning guests. All right. It's been a while since we've had Jay on the channel. It's been almost a year. Has and it? It was like, it was like last, it was honestly, it was like the last stream that wasn't a chapter stream before I moved into my new spot. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that was last November. And then Morge, we had, uh, we had Mr. Morge I here a couple months, months ago. Yeah, yeah, something, maybe more recent. I don't remember exactly. So wanted to bring you guys here uh, because, I mean, you know, we've got some, uh, there's been a lot of peak fiction going on and as two fans of the goat crocodile. I mean, Mr. Moore just put out a video today talking about how he's the uh, greatest villain in One Piece history. Tolls. The timing lined up really, really well. Cause I was just like, <laughs> cause I had it planned for Tuesday and we were kind of going back and forth on like when we want to do this crocodile summit, if we're doing it or whatever. And then like it kept getting bumped till eventually it was Tuesday. I was like, oh, that's actually, yeah, wait, yeah, let's, let's do it then. It's a great idea. <laughs> So I was, I, was, I was gonna say like, you know, contrary to what people may believe, you know, I had a very old video, more I'm, I'm sure you remember, when I thought I was gonna be, you know, I, I wanted to go the BDA law or horror grand line route when I wanted to do a bunch of discussion videos. And I made this video on Crocodile being the underworld emperor, right? This is like two years ago. Uh, it was called JD Scholar. Do you, do you remember that, more? I'm sure you remember that. <laughs> Uh, the JD yeah. Scholar era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that era. The short era, right? I had like a Big Mom video, a kid video where I had actual hopes for kid. You know, that was disappointing, obviously. But um, <laughs> the Crocodile video I had, I've always been very, very strong on the fact that Crocodile is the best villain in One Piece. A lot of people say Dofi for legitimate reasons, but I just think Crocodile is Dofi but better. So that's really it, in my opinion. Outside of obviously Dofi's backstory, we don't have Crocodile's backstory. The point I'm trying to make here is we've invested in Crocodile for a long time. Randy, you saw it. We both had stocks. They laughed at us. There were penny <laughs> stocks at first. They laughed. They mocked us and said, Dofi Goat. I remember when we, th we were saying Kaido's going to be the best villain in One Piece. That was a disgrace, unfortunately. I'm going to be honest. We know this already. Um, and then we see Cross Guild appear. And, you know, I check my phone, uh, I look at Robin Hood uh, and uh, all of us, uh, you know, I see $2,000 in my account and all of a sudden I see, what, $300 million out of nowhere. I'm just like, wow, the timeshare. Me and uh, Randy have a timeshare now in Aruba. I don't know if you guys know. More you're always welcome. Matching, matching timeshare. Matching, matching billers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it's been great. You know, I'm here with my... Uh, all my raid stocks have plummeted. <laughs> oh, you're all the raid stocks. <laughs> you know, more just, more just currently guys, struggling in the chat, but, you know... <laughs> That's fine. I didn't invest too heavily into that, so I, I, I was all right. I was all right. <laughs> I mean, I can't fault anyone who thinks that Doflamingo is like the best villain in One Piece. I, I totally understand where people are there, coming there, from. There's the an thing. argument, but at the same time, it's just Crocodile's just, he, he's just better. He's just better. <laughs> when you compare the stakes of Alabasta to Dressrosa, there, there, is, there is no comparison. Because it's like, Dofi already won. He already accomplished what Crocodile wanted to do, right? No one, no one opposed Dofi when he came in. He just did what he wanted. With Alabasta, Luffy was actually stopping something before it happened. So you just you have these these larger stakes, and Doflamingo was too busy getting mad at everything that that Luffy was go doing. Whereas like Crocodile had plans on plans on plans. Like his hook had a poison hook underneath it, which had a knife underneath it. Like this dude Forgot was about prepared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I just love what Savage. Oda did with Crocodile. And uh, I, you know, I've said this a bunch of times on streams and even in other videos that I've had that where I'm just, I'm so excited. More excited than I've been since probably the Reverie just because Crocodile is back. Because I need Oda to get into his bag and start, mm -hmm. you know, writing a smart villain that has plans. And just flipping this whole idea 
of going ahead and putting bounties on Marines. I just no one yeah, no one could have no one could have predicted that. If someone predicted yeah. that, they're lying. And I hope that like Oda runs with it, you know, because I sometimes there's certain things that he drops that are fun ideas to have floating around in the story or something like that, but other ideas that like he actually pursues and it's like, yeah, this is actually gonna be a thing going forward and like it's gonna be a thing that like works its way into the plot and like leads to bigger events and things like that in the future. I know what you mean by like a really smart villain. Because we've got Blackbeard around the corner, and Blackbeard's like he's a very smart villain, but he's smart in a sort of uh like He's smart, like he's deceptively smart, if that makes sense. Whereas Crocodile's kind of like the more prototypical, straight up mastermind mafioso boss who's got everything, you know, in the in the palm of his hand. And I always felt like that was something that we never really got again with a One Piece villain, because as you said with Doflamingo, like Doflamingo is a really smart character, obviously, and he accomplished everything that he wanted to do. But I felt like in terms of what made for a more threatening villain, it didn't help that with Doflamingo. From the start of Dressrosa, it, the story of Dressrosa is basically O Flamingo having the worst day of his life. That's the story of Dressrosa in a nutshell. Yeah. It starts with him basically like getting blackmailed by law. He's shitting himself because he doesn't want admirals to come after him. He doesn't want Yonko to come after him. Aokiji gives him a bit of a, a bit of a spanking and stuff. And like, <laughs> it's just a few things that like, you know, he quickly reestablishes himself as like a big threat, but like very quickly, like, a dozen or so chapters later, whatever, he's having to press his his nuclear option, which is the birdcage. That's like the last thing that he wants to do. And he has to resort to that, I don't know, like not too far into the day. Like it's like afternoon, the Strahds have showed up and he's like, fuck, this is, it's all <laughs> like I'm pressing the, the nuclear launch codes. Basically. He has to resort to that. Obviously, he's, you know, he's, he's a great foe and everything like that going forward. He gave his gear fourth fight, great backstory, etc. I'm just saying that like, crocodile it was it was like there was nothing that they could really do to fuck with him until luffy actually beat him because he just kept having things under control he just kept having backup plans to his backup plans to you know things just kept going his way over and over and the strats kept falling short to him over and over and it helped that he kept beating luffy along the way as well so as a villain i, I just feel like he, he kind of set up a sense of threat and like effectiveness that no one has quite hit yet kaido could have been close Kaido was definitely there in the physical category. Like, Kaido beat up whoever had he had to beat up on the roof, etc. Kaido never did anything in terms of, like... Like, he kind of started a plan, which was moving Onigashima to the center of Wano Capital. So he kind of started, and that was, like, step one of his bigger plan of ancient weapons and some other stuff, basically. But he was never, like... He didn't do that much aside from beat up characters on the roof. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't, didn't get far into... The, I guess whatever his mission was or whatever his goals were really or the crocodile was kind of continually moving along with uh, operation utopia you know with the course of the arc i want to harp on what more said about mafioso now <laughs> man randy i think i've talked to you about this more i don't know if you know this about me but i am a huge you know mafia sopranos goodfella the irishman godfather i mean scarface yeah i've heard they call you the Casino. fraud father Absolutely. Yeah, exactly well yes you know my whole channel I've seen was the based on Godfather yeah. themes. That's why, exactly. So I call myself the Godfather. So I have the Irishman line. We're brothers. You know, get the fuck out of here. You know, real Italian behavior. I'm not Italian at all. I promise. You know, they. That's all of the story. Anyway, the point is, Crocodile is everything that you would think an Italian mob boss would be in One Piece, outside of Capone, who is your textbook. You like Capone is like the actual textbook, right? Yeah. But in yeah. terms of the actual like demeanor the swagger the fact that no matter what you, whenever you think you have a leg up on him he's already three moves ahead and he just operates like it's another day you know you know like the boss they barely do anything basically they have hitmen they have assassins these assassins carry out the plan you never see it coming like whoa one people barely saw the bomb coming in times square um when Vivi, how many times did Vivi think she actually got the leg up on Crocodile only for Crocodile yeah. to just literally turn the whole table? Vivi sitting on that chair on the on the look. Remember, um, Vivi was yeah, like yeah. the straw hats were locked up. Vivi's on the dining uh, the dining table, and Crocodile's just laughing in her face. Like he's just literally <laughs> looking at her and laughing. I'm like, that is as toxic as it gets, right? But it's like the villainy of Crocodile was felt. Like Luffy had to punch Vivi in the face just to calm her down because of Crocodile scheming. I mean, the the Bon Clay trick with Cobra, like genius, genius stuff. 
Like that's genius. Dance powder. Genius. Acting like a hero. Genius. Over and over and over again. This man is always swindling everybody. And also it's it's the ambition for me because Doflamingo, yeah. yes, he started off with, you know, celestial dragon heritage. So in a sense, he had a leg up. He had like a trump card he could always use. Crocodile, he seems like he built himself from nothing. And to get him, to get to the point where his ambition is, all right, Alabaster's cool. I can take over Alabasta. I don't care about Alabasta. This is all about Pluton. This has not, the kingdom, I can have it. But that's not what I, if you wanted the kingdom, he could have had it and it would have been over. That's it. He would have just been king and he would have been just fine. He wanted Pluton. That's really what he wanted. And the fact that he was this close, he could not predict Nico Robin would betray him because he he thought he knew. He thought he had her. It's like, hey, listen, I don't trust anyone. Remember, so here's the line. We're going to go back to this. When he said to Mihawk, you don't trust anybody. I don't trust anybody. I'm pretty sure he had the same conversation he had with Nico Robin because Nico Robin can't trust anybody. Crocodile can't trust anybody. So he assumed, hey, Nico Robin, you want the Poneglyphs? I want Pluton. We want the same thing. Do what you want. Just tell me the information. We move on. It's that characteristic that you can follow and say that is consistent all the way throughout to the end, even to when he comes back in the story. Still, the character consistencies. Still talking to Mihawk as if he's at the same level. Let's be honest. Like this guy, he talked to Doflamingo. Doflamingo's like, hey, why don't you join my, you know, join my crusade, join my crew? He's like, so I can be a servant to you? Nah, I'm all right. I'm good. I'm actually okay. Doflamingo. I want you to be my subordinate. Yeah, you should be my <laughs> subordinate, right? That's Crocodile <laughs> never, ever, ever let somebody talk above him. He saw Whitebeard, immediately went after Whitebeard. He went after him. I was like, yo, this guy's crazy. <laughs> but Don Flamingo, you know, if I speak, he sees Fuji Tour, all of a sudden he don't want no smoke. Right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just saying, my go pre time skip went into Whitebeard. <laughs> Your go for Fuji Tour. Like I said, bro, all don't I'm saying. Touch. That's all I'm saying, if I speak. It's like for the amount of time. All right, I, I, I'll pose this, right? Because we're talking about the ambition of it all. Crocodile's ambition versus Doflamingo's ambition. Dofi had Dressrosa for years. Okay? If, if Luffy and the crew let Crocodile have Alabasta, where would Crocodile be now? Like, he may have an ancient weapon at that point. Like, if that was part of the plan. Doflamingo had everything that he wanted and then he got comfortable. He just sat. That's the thing. He relaxed. Like there was nothing there. Crocodile wants to be the pirate king. Like, and Luffy gave him a little bit of that back. Doflamingo didn't want anything. And I mean, we may see something like that later on. And, you know, if he breaks out of Impel Down as well, we may see Doflamingo come and decide that he wants revenge on, you know, Mary Joa as well. And, you know, he has his own motivations and all of that for that. But that doesn't stack up to what crocodile's doing right now and then it, but even when it comes to anything with crocodile also it's just the way he goes about things one of the coldest things that crocodile ever did was those uh the kicking claw squad shows up they're like oh man you know we we just pumped ourselves full of these you know Got basically yeah, these, yeah, yeah. these energy steroids we got a couple of minutes we're gonna take you out man and then he's just like oh you only have a couple of minutes oh all right, well, I'm, a, I'm just going to fly up here. Like, grab, go get a ladder. <laughs> Crocodile was mean. Like, Jay was talking earlier about, like, how bad he was to Vivi, but it's like a, a running thing. He's, like, really... I think that was one of the things that really stuck out to me about Crocodile was, like, when Luffy comes up to the roof, I think, like, chapter... I think it's, like, even chapter 200 or something like that, and, like, punches Crocodile in the face for the first time. That's one of my favorite One Piece moments because, like... I think that's the moment that lines up best with the villain basically having gotten literally everything that he wants. So everything went 100% his way, and he's torturing Vivi, just psychologically rubbing it in, making fun of her. She's well, he's able tears. to give his whole plan away to Vivi, exactly. to Koza, like, so everything. toxic, everybody. He's like, and you can't stop it. Like, I don't yeah. know what to say. I'm just going to laugh. A wrap. I'm here. It's yeah. a wrap. And then he drops her, and then Luffy comes. It's an amazing moment. Like, it's a classic, you know, hero saves damsel beats a villain moment but it's like set up and done so well because we care so much about vivi at this point 
and the war has ramped up so well at this point and crocodile's just gotten everything he wants over and over and over again and we we haven't seen luffy in god knows how long so for all of that to come together in one moment it's really really cool seeing luffy come in from flying from the sky and you're like yelling like crocodile where are you whatever it's like uh it's like that avengers moment where thor shows up but like way better because it's one piece so i just like it way better and like you know it's better like uh you know like luffy luffy coming in to save law and stuff like that it's not the same to me just because you know law's law's cool with dying he's cool with everything that's happening you know what i mean like the like do flamingo i think we never quite got to that point that's the same as like the hatred i felt for crocodile at crocodile's peak and like that's a subjective thing i think more so but i think just over the course of the do flamingo storyline like he fucked up a lot of people's lives in various ways but i think having that sort of singular connection to vivi over the course of the arc and the singular connection to like how she felt about the alabasta people all ramping up to you know these confrontations with crocodile I think that singular emotional connection worked a little bit better for me to make me hate Crocodile way, way, way more when it really came down to it, like for the moment for Luffy to beat him up. Right. Because when it comes, because like, when it comes down to it, when it comes to Do Flamingo in the same situation, the uh, Law is supposed to be that Vivi character. We're yeah. supposed to feel that with Law. And I like Law. Well, kind of. I, and, we did. I mean, Law, Law's, we did. and Law's flashback is great, but up until that point. It's like he's just a cool character, whereas like BB at that point had done things, had spent time with the crew, and you know we were already ingrained in the issues of everything. Mm-hmm. So it's, and I don't mean to compare, but that's all we've been be, doing, by the way. I, I, this, of this course, so I'm comparing. Like, I, you know what? Yeah, Forget everything good. I said. I'm comparing. When you compare what Doflamingo and his antagonism did to Law. And then you compare the antagonism of Crocodile directly to Vivi. Crocodile antagonized Vivi so much more than than Doflamingo antagonized Law. Because the antagonism with Doflamingo is strictly with Corazon. Law's other past, you know, with, um, God, what's the name of the virus that they had? It's white something, right? Yeah, it's white something. White lead disease. Yeah, the white lead disease. And, you know, he saw everyone die, his entire family. So the Backstory, terrible, I think, saddest backstory in One Piece. That's an argument for another day. Um, but again, when it comes to Dofi and Law and the antagonism, the reason you feel it more with Vivi and Crocodile is just because Vivi has suffered way too much at the hands of Crocodile. Like, everything that is wrong with her country is because of Crocodile alone. And that's it. Like, Crocodile is... Like, how Arlong, I, I would compare it to how um, Arlong yeah, tormented Arlong. Nami, and Nami reached her breaking point. She's literally stabbing her arm and screaming. Yeah, you feel that? When Luffy and Vivi were talking, and Vivi was, like, losing her mind, and Luffy had to actually physically punch Vivi, it's not the same emotional investment as the Nami and Arlong moment, but I, I make the comparison, which is why I think Crocodile's a villain. This is why Arlong's in my top five, by the way. The antagonism on the the heroine of the entire arc, I think, far exceeds what we had in in Dress Rosa, and I think that does matter. Yeah, and like that's a big part of it, which is just like, like law. I feel sympathy for obviously, uh, actually, et cetera, basically. But like, it's part of the fact that like laws, he's a fighter himself, right? Like he's, he's a very strong himself. character. It's it's just a different vibe when it's like law and Do Flamingo are closer to equals in a sense, right? They're much closer to equals in that like. Law can do a lot more single-handedly against Doflamingo. He can give Doflamingo a challenge. He can he can take him head on. Whereas yeah. Vivi is someone that's very, very helpless. I'm not getting into power scaling like that, but like obviously Law got <laughs> fucked up when it came hey, down. Hey, this, look, I, I, like I, I bring this I bring this up though. Vivi was the no smoke queen though. No, when, no, I agree. When, when, like, when she, she was... when the the second that she saw Crocodile. It was on site. She took his no, head off. I'm not off. saying that she's a coward. That's the thing. I'm saying that she's <laughs> helpless, but that's what made it, like, so much more compelling in a sense that, like, right, she's pure idealism. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's pure idealism. She won't back down, even though she's so helpless in the face of Crocodile, basically. So it was kind of like a big bully really picking on a weak kid that yeah. won't back down, which just uh, brings a different uh, vibe uh, than, like, uh. Law versus Do Flamingo to me to a degree. You get what I'm saying? Like, it just, the feeling of seeing, like, Crocodile, like, holding Vivi and, like, her crying and everything and him about to drop her off the roof and everything like that, 
that like rubbed me the wrong way way more than even like Doflamingo pointing the gun and everything like that in law and being well, the, like, well, hey, what do you want me to do, like, et cetera. That gun scene amounted to basically nothing also. That like, was a yeah. fuck you moment from Law oh, to like, Crocodile, basically. It, was, it would make uh, Law come off looking more badass than the other way around. Exactly. How do you get shot point blank that many times and not die? It just doesn't make sense to me. Mm, what you say? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, so let me ask this then. So how do you guys feel about villains going forward? Because I think when we're talking about Crocodile is the best villain so far, right? I think we're talking about in the context of each arc, right? like who's been the boss that Luffy's had to fight. I don't really know how I stack up characters like I kind of keep Blackbeard, Akainu, guys that we haven't really come up against, you know, and gotten their full time to shine yet. I keep them in a separate category. I hope that I, I consider Blackbeard a better villain than Crocodile by the end of the story. I hope I consider Akainu a better villain. Akainu have got a special place in my heart and just because of, you know, everything that he did, which is to date, you know, the most most devastating shit that a One Piece villain has done, period. So, a guy who I've still got high hopes for come in its story. I just, I just need a bit more time with him, you know, and get his his dynamic with Luffy. For me, it's it's tough because I think I'm always going to have uh, rose colored glasses for Alabasta and Crocodile and everything like that. I'm I'm hoping that Oda can can shift that, um, because that's just that's just going to be a testament to him. But um, I just want, at the very least those characters to be fleshed out as well, you know? And, yeah. you know, that's where, you know, we can, you know, probably get into criticisms of Kaido, but, you know, let's let's stay with the positives of, of Crocodile for now. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best. <laughs> I, I think I, I'm, everyone knows, like, I'm a huge Blackbeard guy. I'm a huge Blackbeard fan. Um, and I would expect him to be the best villain in One Piece just because of the things he's accomplished, just in general. He's accomplished a lot. Um, Crocodile, while we love him, you know, he hasn't accomplished, he just doesn't have the, the same credentials that Blackbeard has, unfortunately. Um, but at the same time, in terms of iconic, I don't see Crocodile being taken away as one, the most iconic villain in One Piece for quite some time. You I mean, know, Blackbeard's going to, I think Blackbeard's going to pass him up no matter what by the end of the story. Unless, like, Blackbeard really, really, really gets shafted out, I think that it's hard to say Crocodile will be more iconic than Blackbeard. Buddy. That would probably be the last draw, by the way. If Blackbeard, get, if Blackbeard gets shafted, that would be the final straw for me. I mean, I'll that be would be the final straw because it would be the end of the story. I, so, still, like, still. I'm if I get, one if I get another, uh, you know what, yeah, like I said, stick yeah. to the positives. But yes, yeah. <laughs> just pray. Fingers crossed. Please, God. Don't do it. <laughs> I, I have a lot of confidence in Blackbeard. I think, like, just the fact that the little stuff that Oda slipped about Blackbeard, in, you know, even the Odin flashback and everything like that, the stuff that's being slipped in the SBSs, I think that there's, like, a really, really good Blackbeard backstory. I think that there's something really, really exciting with Blackbeard around the corner. Fingers crossed, man. What, what do you guys have expectations-wise for what we could see from Crocodile? Well, I know I'm not allowed to talk about expectations because that's really criticizing the series beforehand no. or something like that. No, but we're not you know what? That. Let's play with fire. So if we're talking about expectations, uh, I, honestly, my expectations for Cross Guild are nothing crazy at the moment. I just want one at least significant encounter with the Marines because otherwise, why even, why even set up this whole it's agenda for spicy. them as being you know Marine oriented that they're trying to hunt the Marines? So I'm really, really one of the things I talked about recently is that I feel like Mihawk. Needs, well, I'm talking to the Sanji Summit people here, so maybe they don't care about Mihawk, but I'll just say that I feel like Mihawk needs one significant showing before he fights Zoro, because it's just just disappointing if you build up Zoro's dream for so long in the story, and then the guy he beats never really got to show. Like, the first serious match Mihawk ever has is losing to Zoro. I think that would be pretty yeah, we, disappointing. We, we have no bar to even... Put Mihawk on. There's no the, the yeah. pedestal is talk from everybody else. Exactly. So like, show see them. It would cut play. a ice. The oh, you know, cut a tidal wave. wave. Like, like, I don't yeah, even know tidal wave. Like like what? <laughs> All right. Cool. And then he cut Buggy into yeah. a million pieces without hockey. <laughs> you cut, yeah, you cut up. You cut up a Yonko. 
That's right. <laughs> that happened. Yeah. So um, there we go. Yeah. yeah. Like I, we, we yeah. need something out of Miha because it would be like Luffy beating up Kaido if Kaido never fought a single other person, basically. Right? It'd be like, oh, you beat the world's strongest creature. At least that's what people said, and then Luffy beat him or something. Like yeah. That. So I mean, I think I, Mihawk needs something, and I think Cross Guild's direction potentially sets them up to at least get to see Mihawk, you know, have a showing against an admiral. He doesn't have to beat an admiral, but like, you know, something. What if he took out a vice admiral? Like, oh my oh, come on, come a vice admiral, <laughs> a vice I mean, admiral. I'm Momonga's just saying nice because it, it, are they gonna take vice uh, admiral? Momonga's not a slouch. All right. I mean, yeah. do we? I, do, you me, do, do you want me? Do you want to just? Do you want Mihawk to just take an admiral out of the story, just willy nilly, just like that? Hey, Bartolomeo beat up a vice admiral like in the bathroom or something. Yeah, okay, <laughs> but that's <laughs> Mainer. Nobody, we know the spectrum of vice admiral. You just said vice admiral. Like, okay, so but I'm, I'm, I'm specifically saying Momonga. I'm saying Momonga. Momonga? He's built different. Momonga was introduced, not introduced, but Hancock was introduced. Zero diffing Momonga. So like, okay, that's no. First of all, that's hacks. First that's, of all, that's, that's not true. that's not zero right, diffing. That's, fair, fair. that's definitely hacks, and he beat the hacks. So he, right. the fact that he has the awareness to do so, like I said, don't sleep on Momonga. Like there's an agenda out there that Momonga is different. I'm telling you. But would that be enough if Mihawk no. beat Momonga? No, it's not enough. Hold on, this is this is insanity. <laughs> Momonga, I was just I was just insanity. I mean, people, Mihawk just came out with a three point. For, for, all, we, for five, all we know, though, five billion very bounty. The Marines are like his sword skills are greater than Shanks. Oh, and greater than Mamanga's apparently. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mamanga. <laughs> oh man, this is the Sanji summit. This is no, oh, no, hey, no. Hey, it has but, nothing to do with Sanji. I swear. He doesn't have to so beat an what's, admiral. What's the over like, under on something. Vice Admiral Stainless being alive though? Stainless? <laughs> no, he would just kill Stainless. He, he but was stainless, stainless was there. He was there at Empty Bluffs. <laughs> He's the one that was after Buggy. Fuck, I forgot about that. He's got to be dead. Stainless is probably alive. Oda didn't kill like a vice admiral off screen. He, did, he wouldn't. He just wouldn't do that. Someone in the chat said Momonga is Dragon's rival. I mean, <laughs> 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 like you never know. Momonga is secretly the world's strongest. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So the reason, so I'm not, I'm not trolling here. I, I know it sounds like I am, but the reason I say this is because the spectrum of Vice Admiral is you can't really predict that at all because you have Garp as a Vice Admiral, Suru obviously, um, and I feel like there are certain like I mean Smoker. But I the know people me. in chat who don't know who we're talking about. Look, you see, look the legend, right? You see that mustache, <laughs> you but you know what I'm saying here is that you know you have people like Smoker who are still Vice Admirals. And then you have people like Maynard. So you, there's a clear disparity between the powers of Vice Admiral. It's not really a level. It's just a rank at this point. It's like Kobe being a captain. Kobe's clearly stronger than a lot of Vice Admirals. The point I'm saying is that when we saw Momonga, he's shown at least the portrayal that he is intelligent enough to know what to do in a split second moment against someone like Bo Hancock, where everyone else fell short of it, right? So in my mind, didn't he go up against Luffy? Didn't he? Didn't he go up against Luffy for like a split second and like cut him? Or am I? It's Marine Ford though. It's, it's Marine like Ford. Pre-time skip Luffy. It's, it's pre-time skip, right? But my point is, is, like he's formidable. I would say he's probably the most formidable. If Mihawk, even if it's a fodder fight, and Mihawk just like low diffs him, or like basically no diffs him, that in itself is a feat because a lot of the community doesn't view Momonga as a slouch. So if Mihawk is low diffing a vice admiral, like off screen, like finishing him, you look at him like, all right, well, there you go. Because what are you going to bring Vista out and then have Mihawk low diff him after everything that happened in Marine Four? I agree, but that's kind of what people want out of Mihawk at this point. At least like it's got to match the talk to, you know, the walk to the talk, right? Because it's kind of like. I would take what Whitebeard did to Vice Admiral John Giant as a feat. That is a feat. I, I would agree, but I'm saying there's like a difference between that being like something Whitebeard does to get us excited versus like if that was Whitebeard's only thing that he did versus it Marine. But it, but it's about Mihawk's the execution with, like, too. It's about it, the is, execution. it is the execution. He because just not, he did a, <laughs> he, he annihilated John the Giant. It was terrible what happened to him. That was a terrible experience. He, he twisted I'm just Marine saying, still got to fight. We still got to see Whitebeard versus the Admirals and stuff like that. Like we still had to see that stuff like a little bit. I'm just saying I think Mihawk can't just Authorize like a vice admiral. I think it's got to be someone a bit. He's got to do it in the same way that Whitebeard 
It's okay. Okay, so, yeah, I'm saying so just show, show us him against an admiral. Show us him against an admiral or like a commander again, but like not. Commander he's, Chopper? I, I don't know exactly what he's supposed to do oh, against Mander. these guys. I'm just saying show us. <laughs> show us. Because otherwise Zoro comes along, he beats Mihawk. It's like, Mihawk, fuck, the guy that beat Mamanga? Not him. Oh no. <laughs> Can I just say just beat King? That probably King outside above of, Mamanga, I would hope, right? Outside of probably teching, this is probably the most anybody has ever talked about Mamanga. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tekken's probably got two, three videos on Mamanga each thirty five. Somewhere minutes long. somewhere in there. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about cross guild, right? Yeah, what do you guys think is gonna happen with cross guild? My theory right now, whether it happens or or not, is I think that uh, Caribou's contact is Crocodile. So this entire time, Caribou has been wanting to give information on the ancient weapons to Crocodile. I mean, the logic there lines up. But even beyond that, um, I got a, a, a great comment when I was like, you know, talking about all this where, you know, they were basically saying, what if Caribou was a former Baroque Works agent, right? And then I took it to the next level because I remembered that uh, Oda had put out sketches of some of the other numbers that we didn't get. And guys, if you, you got your computers up, look up Oda's drawing for Mr. Ten. Because as far as I'm concerned, it looks like a free time skip. Uh, caribou. I could see that. I could actually see that. That does that does line up a bit. It does reasonably well. And I mean, he's got an X on his chest. He was connected to Diaz Drake in his uh, in his story, uh, and he's always talking about the heavens, which is ten in Japanese. I don't know if it came out to be that. I would just be I'd be excited. And it's a way to tie Caribou into the story. Then we would get something because everybody's been, you know, speculating like, oh, man, uh, Blackbeard, Big Mom. Well, you know, Big Mom, not necessarily now, but like these <laughs> emperors are going to be the ones that Caribou is going to tell. And they're going to go and kidnap Shirohoshi. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. But that's the best way to bring Crocodile and the Cross Guild into the fray is Crocodile wanted the ancient weapons from the beginning. If he finds out where they are, and then he actually gets them, then it opens the door for him to get them and then have them be stolen by someone like Blackbeard. <laughs> I could see that. Yeah, because I had penciled in Blackbeard as the guy that Caribou's talking about. I just like mentally penciled that in. Like that just made sense to me. I could partly because I wrote off Cross Skill just because I was like Buggy and Mihawk getting the ancient weapons. Like in my mind, they're like good guys slash like not not ancient weapon guys, I suppose. But now that we know more that Crocodile is like the brains behind this operation, really, and like he's the one most likely steering the ship, I could definitely see that being the direction. That's an Why interesting possibility. Ever... I hadn't even thought about Caribou being, you know, potentially a former Baroque Works member or something like that. But why would Crocodile just suddenly stop going after the ancient weapons? Is, you know, one of my big. Because I'm saying more so like if we assume that Caribou does have the connect to Crocodile then yeah, Crocodile would definitely go after the ancient weapons. I'm saying more so like, did Oda write in that connection from Caribou to Crocodile, or is it still Caribou to Blackbeard to get Blackbeard to the ancient weapons faster? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're right that Caribou is talking to Crocodile, for sure, they'll be going to, uh, after the ancient weapons. At this point in time though, let's say Crocodile doesn't have Caribou as his connect. What his agenda is, ancient weapons would like make a lot of sense just because that was his plan way back in Alabasta. But at the same time, I feel like may have a renewed sense of confidence in his own strength etc at this point that he may just be trying to form his own coalition to go up against the world government so he may have stopped feeling as though he needs to rely on something like pluton but obviously if pluton was around and he could pick it up that's a different discussion <laughs> but uh I'm, I'm just gassing crocodile up but that's what we're supposed to do is the croc summit of yeah. course no it's hard to imagine how strong crocodile is at the moment just because it's like there's to me it's still ambiguous as to like the switch between Alabasta versus Marine Ford Crocodile, right? It's still like... ambiguous to me how much of that is like, do we have to headcanon something here? Like Crocodile got his hockey back or something? Because that's kind of what I go with. He got his groove back. Or is it, 
yeah, like the, there's some ambiguity there, and then it's like, okay, and did Crocodile get stronger from there to now, like over the two years? I would like to think Absolutely. so. So it's really, really hard to tell like where people would put him at right now. I think that Crocodile was always that strong, and Luffy got lucky. I think so too. Because really, really I think I think he literally he underestimated Luffy, Luffy he all the way Luffy through. Twice. He beat him three times. Like, why would you? No, no, I get you, but I'm just like the final. To me, it's anime, so the final round is the only one that counts. So like, it doesn't matter how many times you lost beforehand. To me, it's like the final round's what counts. That's in my head. And then the other fair, thing is like, Luffy's hits shouldn't even like hurt Crocodile past a certain point. So I kind of headcanon that Croc was just like, he lost his hockey or something along those lines. That's how I mentally just. Well, technically, he killed Luffy. Yeah, he should like technically like he killed him. I mean, technically, Kaido killed Luffy. But uh, the point is, is like. I, the way I see it, bro, I just throw Alabasta out. I just completely throw it out because when it comes to power scaling villains with Luffy, it doesn't make sense. If you power scale Katakuri with Luffy, and I always tell people this, I'm not gonna, into, I'm not gonna get into the agendas. But if you power scale the villains based on their fight with Luffy, you're always gonna underestimate them. You're right, but it's just like Crocodile's like. There's a difference between like, oh, Hoke Island Luffy versus Katakuri, or like, Year Fifth Luffy versus Kaido versus like. Crocodile and Alabas, it's like, it's like heaven and earth in theory in terms of like where people put Crocodile at now. Like a lot of people are like Crocodile's as strong as Joe Flamingo. It's like, there's there's like a wiggle room of like how of what Luffy can do. And then there's like whatever the hell he did in Alabasta. Cause that's just like, that'd be like beating Doflamingo Flamingo in Alabasta. You know what I'm saying? So I, I personally just subscribe to the idea that Crocodile lost some of his mojo at that point in time. Everyone's got their own explanation, I guess. It is what the it is. Impel Down arc and Marine Ford really, more than anything, just solidified how different Crocodile's built. Boiling baths, then flinch. All right? He gets freed. You know, Jay, we talked about this last year. Like, the man stopped in a middle of a prison break to make sure that his fit was straight. All right? Oh, crispy. <laughs> at all times. At all times. Like, and then he proceeds to go to the war and have one of the best showings. And he he arguably can be put in MVP tier. Yeah. Because he saved he Ace. Stopped Ace. Saved he stopped Saved Ace. Saved Luffy. Went up against Mihawk. Went up against Dofi. <laughs> went up against Whitebeard. Like, Akainu? Akainu? <laughs> I was like, 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 he stopped Akainu from catching Jinbei, didn't he? Like, or my tripping. People laughed when I said this dude should be worth like two billion berries. He's worth two billion berries. Yeah. And that's yeah. when Randy made his fortune. Oh. That's it. He put stocks early. Early. Aruba. I'm, I'm talking like, <laughs> yeah, hey, 2002. <laughs> All right, we've been here. <laughs> they weren't paying attention. They weren't paying attention. Nah, just you know, let that sit, um, man. And I'm, I'm so, going to have to pay not that much taxes because I've had those stocks for a long time, too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Play them off early. Um, Guys, uh, <laughs> I think I got another 510 if that's good because I do have to pick up food that I scheduled like before I realized kind of when the stream schedule would kind of end up at, if that's good. But gotcha. you know, um, <laughs> I think we got a good amount of discussion in. <laughs> there is one thing I wanted to, I, there's one question I wanted to ask. So this is, not a lot of people have talked about this and I completely understand, but because he had one of the best fights in the series and arguably Zoro's best fight still to this day, Mr. One, arguably out of any character that Crocodiles actually cared about, I think the only one he legitimately cared about was Mr. One. Do we see another Crocodile's lying win? when he says he doesn't? I think Crocodile trusts Mr. One. I don't know he if he trusts cares Mr. about Mr. One, but I think he trusts Mr. One. Care oh, is a strong word for Crocodile. But I, don't I, know, I think man. he's. Because he saw Mr. One. Because, wait, didn't Crocodile wait? Didn't he say, I need to break someone out first? And then he broke yeah, up Mr. Something One? Something like that. I mean, something like that. Dude, he wasn't doing that it's with hilarious because Crocodile barely he wasn't knew doing Mr. That one. With Mr. Three he wasn't doing that for anybody else. He's yeah. Like, I got I to gotta go and get, uh, I gotta go and get Mr. One. I mean, I mean, part of it's just because like, he didn't grab him a fit. He let him stay in those stripes, but you know, Mr. One looks better, you know, like that. He's got the tats and everything like that. So like, mm, I think that <laughs> at the very least, um, Crocodile and Luffy and Alabasta, like a lot of it was like friendship, 
Ragnarok's like, I don't trust anybody or anyone. And Luffy's like, well, I have my friends, blah, 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 blah. That was like a big part of their back and forth throughout Alabasta. I do wonder how much, if at all, Luffy rubbed off on Crocodile in a way. But Crocodile heading back to the New World, and this time he's like, no, this time I'm not going alone. I need at least a little bit of back. Like, I need a guy. Like, I need a right hand my or something guy. like that. My conciliator. So I like that idea. <laughs> So for someone to me that, you know, we normally identify Fishman as, you know, the African-Americans of One Piece, it's nice to just see Das Bones and say, oh, yeah, this guy's black. You know, so this is just personal for me. Oh, I see. Yeah. You know, it's it's a, it's a personal thing. I, I, I'm sure a lot of black people can, like, really resonate with that outside of, obviously, the skin tax. Mr. One's demeanor, his character, you know, him at Marine Ford. Mr. One wasn't bad at Marine Ford either. Did, so... I'm remembering a lot of things in Marine Ford. Did he cross? Did he see Mihawk at all? Mihawk he, on Vista? He like stopped he, Mihawk's he attack. And then Mihawk like tried and then he cut him basically. So Of course he cut him, yeah. right? I, it would be shocking if Mr. One did anything to Mihawk, but he did. So he crossed Blake. He okay. blocked him once. He straight blocked him once. And then Mihawk was like, oh, I'll try. And then he got him the second time. But the first time is impressive. Like that's a, that's a big deal. Billy Bob, I'm not. I thought that too. It's okay. Morge got off. He, he got lucky, but uh, what? <laughs> he said, uh, "Black men look good in jail clothes." <laughs> question with a bunch of question marks. <laughs> I wanted to Let set you up. Say but this. I was like, <laughs> Hold on. You guys know that. You guys know what uh, Jinbei is supposed to be from? Jinbei's in the real world. He's supposed to be from India. Oh, I'm tired of everyone trying to claim. Him. <laughs> you guys can't claim him. You, you guys have other him. black characters. Name <laughs> one Indian character in One Piece. You know what? We get the fishman. I don't care. We get the fishman. Whoa, 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 we whoa, whoa. <laughs> More just claiming the fishman. God. From Oda said Jimmy's from wow. India. I, I don't know where this whole. It's about to get spicy. I, I literally don't know where it comes from. Oh my God. Oh, this is wow. a new agenda. I never knew I needed this agenda until today. This is great. <laughs> You, you're gonna start beef on Twitter. I hope you know that. That's gonna start. Just wait. It's, but it's I have the, the. It's it's in an SBS. What am I supposed to say? Like this it's is in word the of SBS. God. <laughs> don't don't tweet about this. You guys, it's too late. Keep it's too late. Right? They're gonna tweet about it. <laughs> They're gonna tweet about it. But no, Randy, how do you feel about Mr. Uh, Mr. One in general? Are you happy he's back in the story? Thoughts on that? Is he more just a side character? To you? No, I mean Mr. One is. Uh... He's a top tier. Uh, it's still to this day my favorite fight that Zoro's ever had. Uh, I was gonna ask if you guys got that or King at this point because I think I still got Mister One. Mister oh, One. Oh no, I I didn't. Feel, I like this close. I yeah. didn't feel like King okay. pushed Zoro in the way that Daz Bones did. And it's yeah. like, and even beyond, you know, all of the Conqueror's hockey and all of this stuff, and even you know, throwing another flashback in there, it just didn't feel like it had the same stakes. It just did like I kind of read it like at some point I was like they're pretty similar right so I kind of like tried to do a side by side look and like part of it's the way it's drawn because the fights back then are drawn a lot more I don't know there's more detail it's like a bit more visceral but, like it seemed like it just felt more intense back when that was happening partly also because with the king fight like there's lots of cuts in and out between other stuff happening and everything like that in the one position so I lean towards like Daz Bones actually by a good margin. I remember when the King fight was coming out, everyone was like, oh, this is the best Zora fight ever. So I kind of had to keep my mouth shut about it at that time. But I'm glad that now we have the perspective and it's okay to say Daz Bones still got it. I think for me, when it comes to Daz Bones, one, Zoro just showed more. Um, he showed more his bag. And I always tell people that when, the one time, the one time I was truly impressed with Zoro's bag is his fight with Kaku. And then it's his fight with Das Bones. And I feel like Zoro went through so many different iterations of his sword skills to the point where him discovering the next level of swordsmanship within that fight, not to mention the damage he took from Das Bones is the most damage he's taken from any opponent. Yeah. 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 No and opponent has pushed him farther than Das Bones pushed him. To this day, you cannot tell me that uh, Zoro did not use hockey in that battle. And in. all three types, all three yeah, types. Absolutely did. All three types. Like I conquerors, conquerors, I don't know about conquerors. What would he use conquerors? He conquerors. For? But he used the two. He used the two. He definitely it, it, used it, two. It, 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 it was all right. It's at least observation and armament. But I mean, he yeah, saw yeah. observation, you know, to figure out where the stones were going to fall, and armament to actually cut them. And one of my favorite things that you know, 
to, to go back to just to hammer that point in is when Zoro is like, you know, he's training at the end in the post Alabasta and he's just sitting there and he's just like, I've got to figure out how to like tap back into that power. Yeah, that makes sense because it's hockey. I didn't think about it like that. Like, it's yeah. not something he can do on command, at least at that point in the story. Yeah. Also, like, I'm surprised that they. That's the thing, like, Mr. Zoro versus King, that rubbed me the wrong way a little bit with the Grim Reaper stuff. You know, I don't, I don't want to end our segment with stuff like this, but, like, I'll just say this, which is that, like, the Grim Reaper, like, Oda was going for, yeah, Zoro, this was really brutal for him, put him on the verge of death, and Zoro versus King was a brutal fight. But just comparing and contrasting, as we said, like, I felt like at the end of Mr. One, that felt like a much more, I guess, harrowing experience for Zoro than I felt like even versus King, so I felt like the Grim Reaper stuff was, I don't know, it just, it rubbed me the wrong way when I was reading, because it, it didn't feel earned that Oda now has Zoro facing death, because it just didn't feel like he had been pushed to that so point. Good. I feel like we'd yeah. seen him pushed further with, like, versus Mr. One, or even that, nothing happened, stuff like that, you know what I mean? That Grim Reaper moment is, like, one of the few things that I'm, you know, at the moment giving a pass to, because I'm basically just saying, like, this clearly needs to be fleshed out upon at some point and yeah. hasn't, you know, so I'm just like, I'm going to move past this for now. And I'm going to trust that Oda is going to bring at least that back around, you know, but, uh, you know, RIP going to Ryuma's grave and the Nidai Kotetsu, all that. <laughs> if I speak. <laughs> Nidai Kotetsu, I can forgive. That was just a whatever, I guess. But the Ryuma's, Ryuma's really grave, fun. I'll give you a shoe sweet bag. I'll yeah. give you shoes we back if I can go visit his grave. <laughs> or I'll just give you shoes we back. <laughs> or you can just take shoes yeah, and I can just. You know, I, I'll, I'll just. Yeah, I'll just. <laughs> you got me. You guys, I think I do have to hop out. Sorry about not staying long. I just, you know, time wise, we did a bit later, I think, than, than expected, basically. But yeah. That was a good time. Happy to have been part of one of these summits. Um, <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Rock it out. We all agree. You. Uh, drop the, uh, drop the Moorish plushies in the chat, everybody. Hey, wait, that's a emote? Is that an emote? Uh, just right. sure is. <laughs> oh, dude, it was funny, yes, yeah, like, literally I was, you, you came in and saw, I was trying to figure out, like, what badges and emotes to do, so I was, like, pulling up your channel as an example to explain to my chat, like, alright, so we're looking at Randy's channel right now. We need similar stuff to this, but not the same. So what do we want to do? I was trying to crowdsource ideas through that. <laughs> It'll be similar stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right. That was hilarious. I was talking to you guys. See you all later. Take care, Morge. Later, my guy. Oh. So, let's see. You got a little more time, Jay, or? I have a bit more time. I'd say about maybe 10, 15. All right, cool. Let me... Um... Switch things over. Get those technical difficulties out the way. Well, yeah. while you're doing that, I did want to ask you about Buggy, because I don't think we talked about Buggy just yet. Um, no, we did not talk about Buggy. And like his role in this. Um, and then maybe I can just like share my thoughts while you're like um, figuring everything out. And then um, obviously if the chat has any questions, I'll probably take a look at that. But um, Yeah, and I do have to get into the supers as well. Of course. Lame J, wait, what is that? Lame J behind Randy, JD behind. What does that mean? What what does that mean? Gady legend. All right, so how do we how are we getting here? Why is the chat? What are we doing? What is going on? I don't know what the chat. I don't know what the chat picked up on just now. But um, ignoring the chat until they come back. Um, I think Buggy being in the position that he's in is interesting because I think Buggy's actually going to bring something to the table. I think Buggy's going to bring something to the table that both Mihawk and Crocodile don't expect because he still has that treasure map from Shanks. Now, do you think Oda's actually going to cash in on that or no? Because Buggy, again, he's thirsty for treasure, he's hungry for treasure. If he has caribou in his pocket, uh, you're thinking, oh, wait, guys, listen, I have Pluton, but we're not going to get Pluton unless you guys acknowledge me as leader. And then maybe he's going to try and barter with them to actually make him the official leader instead of just the pseudo leader in the face. Like, do you think Buggy's capable of doing something like that or no? I could see Buggy, uh, like, saying all of that. 
<laughs> you know, like, oh, the treasure ends up being like, you know, an ancient weapon or, or something crazy. And then he's like, well, I'm only going to give you this if you make me the leader. And then Crocodile's just going to like take it out of his hand, you know, or something like I'm that. I'm about to say, yeah, Crocodile yeah. would probably just. Kill he's just going to sun him. <laughs> it's just. It's. <laughs> No, at no point is Oda ever going to not have Buggy be a gag. That's just... That's fair. I know Buggy's never really been taken seriously, so I get it. I think it's it, it would just be funny to see... And it's true, Buggy's clout was all based on a meme as well. When you think about everything that he's been credited for has been in the face of him memeing around. Yeah. So maybe he might trip upon an ancient weapon? Like accidentally find one? Or Captain John's treasure this whole time has been an ancient weapon, so it's Captain John's treasure. What if what if Captain John's treasure is the Poneglyph? The rogue poneglyph, the last one. If they're going to Laugh Tale, right? If this is going to be like a mad dash to Laugh Tale, you know, and we are going to have like because I, I fully expect at least Buggy to be there, you know, especially with the Odin flashback, you know, like, and everything just setting everything up that he didn't get to go and all this. So he's got to be there. Shanks probably has to be there, uh, you know, and at this rate, we might as well just have Crocodile there, Blackbeard you know, show up and it's just who's going to get there first uh, right. and walk away with it. But that means that they're going to have to get some Poneglyphs. You know, and it's like Law has some rubbings, Kid has some rubbings. Are they really going to, you know, play into this final part? Are they going to be there as well? Like, how many people are going to make it to Laugh Tale? And there should only be one, in my opinion. I would be shocked if more than one there, goes. There can be only one. Right. Um, but not but, many. So, oh, go ahead. I want you to finish it up. But it just seems with the way that Otis setting it up by giving Kid and Law all of that, that we are going to have more than just the Straw Hat crew there. And that it's going to, it's going to be the Straw Hats that like get into whatever is the central part of it where Roger was, you know, where he starts laughing, um, which I hope Luffy does have a different response, know, like, response to it than, than Roger did. But um, I could see, you know, a gag where Buggy does get there first or something, you know, it's like there's... <laughs> There's a lot of things that Oda can do, but he needs to give them Poneglyphs. And uh, I did a, uh, a collab with Teching recently, and he was saying, uh, he when I told him like the Caribou's Mr. Ten stuff, he was like, what if, you know, he brought up the thing that, you know, everybody was talking about the cover story for the Germa, like people thought like, oh, is it Crocodile and Das Bones, right? And it's like, okay, well, what if the Cross Guild did go to uh, Big Mom's territory and get the rubbings as well, and they also have them. You know, so it's it just seems it's we just need to see where Oda wants to take all of this stuff. And Big Mom is it's interesting to say that because Big Mom is you would assume she's not a whole cake island right now, and there's chaos and okay. Well, I mean, I look that you know, I don't necessarily want to get into, you know, all of this, but I mean, we're going to get into it. The volcano erupted and basically the, you know, the idea could be that Big Mom and Kaido got shot out of the volcano. No, no, no. Now, no. <laughs> now no way. One, of, one, of, one of the people in the, you know, in the chat, and they're even here today, Emil, said, what if Smoothie brings out the lava? From Big Mom and that smoothies big feet of the series and it's like and I just thought I was like you know I could see Oda doing that we still haven't seen the Big Mom Pirates either yeah we haven't <laughs> how okay so let me ask you this if that did happen how would you feel I'm curious I that's that's the question that's the question. <laughs> That's the question. I don't know is what you're telling me. You have no idea how you'd feel because you're waiting for it to happen. <laughs> um, I'd be more I'd be more upset if Kaido came back than if Big Mom came back because I feel like there's more to do with Big Mom than there is with Kaido. Yes, but then would you? So you okay with Kaido being dead? Absolutely. But lava, 
killing Kaido. After turning into a lava beast, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll put it this way. It's probably better if Kaido's dead. Yes. For the yeah. story at this point, it's probably better. Because especially at, especially point, at this point. At this point, because if Kaido's back, Luffy's the only one that's to beat this guy, so Luffy's gonna have to fight him again. Who else is gonna... If Greenbow didn't even show up to, to Wano because of Kaido, you know, well, like there you have it. That's what Mihawk can do. <laughs> Mihawk, yo. If, um, okay, no, 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 no. Because if Mihawk kills Kaido, <laughs> nobody should beat Mihawk except for Luffy. And even then, I don't think Luffy can beat him. Yeah. Because, like, you know, you know, um, I'm just uh, weapons I'm like just swords. Yeah, of I'm course, but you. but you you got my brain moving now because now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, hmm, would that be acceptable? You just gotta, <laughs> you gotta super chat from tier one. You in tier, no, tier Tyro yeah, will. Tyro, oh will, yeah, you definitely want to read that one. <laughs> oh my guy. He said, <laughs> Big Mom back from the depths like Jay's chair. <laughs> yeah, all right, he's here. All right, the chair is here. The chair is here to stay. <laughs> chair piece does chair exist. Piece is back. It, it does exist. Yeah. I did yeah. not plan. I did not plan this, by the way, I promise. Let's see, let's see, hold on, hold on. Can, can we get much higher? Ugh, so, high. so high. What does that mean? Is that the One Piece meme with Whitebeard? Where did, so, tell me what that meme originated from. All right, so I apparently someone from uh, Better Call Saul was hit up on Cameo to say the One Piece, the One Piece does exist, right? So, and he just, did it with this like extreme emphasis, right? To where it ended up getting memed, and then I think someone took Whitebeard saying it, but then put his voice underneath it. Oh, okay. And then at some point, someone took Dark Fantasy and played that underneath. And then <laughs> the internet, because the internet is the internet, and I just hate the internet. Like they took it to a whole other place that we're not going to get into, but nobody look it up. Okay, so I heard that I heard that other level. I just didn't know the origin. So I'm like, okay, I'm seeing it now. Okay. All right. Yeah, so it, it, it had it had several stages, but I'm just sitting here like and it's like I just it's just surreal for me cuz I mean, I've said, I said this before to the chat because they were talking about it as well, but like Dark Fantasy has been my ringtone since the song came out. Like literally the can you get much higher part is my alarm like i wake up to that every day <laughs> and it ruined it for you you're done and, uh, i mean i still haven't changed it though it's just... <laughs> instead of waking up every morning to bliss you're waking up to images you don't want to see <laughs> That's, you gotta change it the ringtone's gotta go randy i'm sorry it's gotta I, but, go but it i mean we're talking 12 13 years now like i have been programmed like i don't wake up to anything else <laughs> Like the uh, internet ruined this for me. The internet, yeah, the internet has ruined <laughs> 13 years of your life right then and there. That's unbelievable. Uh, Pavlov's, you know, bell, everything like that. Like I do not get up. You can ask Chrissy unless Dark Fantasy plays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I cannot even imagine. It's stung is definitely stuck in Chrissy's head. Uh, no, like, 100%. Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Like, <laughs> Without I mean, it. Like I've had I, Chrissy's told me like my son has jumped on top of me and I was just like no but the song plays I'm up you're up yeah <laughs> that is hilarious man <laughs> it's like me I have my alarm clock is the uh Jojo's pillar uh pillar men music that's my alarm when I wake up so you can imagine it's just waking up to terror every every morning to go to work <laughs> I mean hey, whatever works it's gotta get it's gotta get you up it gets the job done man yeah <laughs> so uh any any other thoughts on so we talked about buggy i mean I, I guess we've established that buggy's really just gonna be a meme character in this in this whole cross guild arrangement but how and you already mentioned how far they can go um do you think they're gonna have a specific group that's going to try and fight them that's not the straw hats hmm because I don't want to see, personally, I don't want to see a Luffy crocodile run back. I, I want to see, I, I'd, have, I'd actually love to see Law pull up to the cross guild. Because, Law. right. Because, and I feel like this has been set up also because Law was gassing Buggy. Like, he was just like, oh man, like he's got to be like that dude. So I want to see Law try to like fight Buggy 
but his power doesn't work on him. No. Because Buggy just works. puts himself back together. And it's just like, whoa, what is this? Oh, no wonder you're an emperor. <laughs> Buggy actually hard counters low. I never thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I need Buggy that. hard counters anyone to be on. Well, any swordsman at least, I'd say. But I mean, like, what if you put some hockey on it? Like, what Hockey's happens different. then? What 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 happens then? What happens to Buggy if someone's using hockey? What if he has observation and he uses observation just like Katakuri Aokiji anticipates the cut and just separates before he gets cut? You're gassing Buggy hard. I mean, listen, if there's anything that Oda would give Buggy at least to strengthen his ability to the maximum, it's observation. Buggy with Future Sight would be the funniest thing I've ever seen to date. That's a meme. Buggy on the Future Sight is a meme and it's in Oda's, it's in the Oda playbook. All right, what I need now, I literally need a scene that is like the equivalent of Usopp unlocking observation in Dressrosa, but with Buggy. Like oh I God. need I needed to like have all of these different panels of him unlocking it and reaching it and <laughs> you need to see it in the anime where his eyes you see his like big red nose. It's the focus on the nose and you see this little red Katakuri eye before he dodges in the anime. Yo, funniest thing ever. That would be hilarious. I'd live for that moment. It's the perfect meme. Buggy is the perfect meme. Exactly. And then you add future side to it. I mean, the meme just gets better. <laughs> I'm going for it. That's my agenda. Buggy has future side. We'll get into That's some it. of these chats here. Uh, AJ1218 said, thanks, Jay and Morge, for coming on. Uh, we appreciate your insight. Sadly, though, uh, Crocodile is the second greatest villain right after Gein. All right, shout out to Gein. I do like Gein. Like him, mm -hmm. that's the guy. Kayla Brown, shout out to the three goats. Fresh off to get a reverie vod. This is going to be refreshing. Uh, do you think there's a chance for an actual croc backstory now? It has to be coming. I think that'd be what we... Oda hinted to it because of what he said to Mihawk. So I feel like that has that would have to be one. True, true. <laughs> I um, I, I mean, I would love it. Anything that fleshes out, uh, you know, Brock is perfectly okay with me. Uh, even if it's just two pages, like I'm perfectly fine with that. But the, the difference between Crocodile and, um, I mean, even Kaido with his hundred plus chapters of development, Crocodile just like let the what was on the page in the real time define him. Yeah. Whereas Oda spent a lot of time uh, leaving it up to uh, later stories or later flashbacks to contextualize what he was doing in Wano with Kaido. So yeah. it's like when we get the, the Rocks flashback, we're going to see some elements there. And then we'll be able to go to lines like, uh, you can't be Joy Boy either. And we may understand that a little more. Uh, whereas in Alabasta, everything is right there for you with Crocodile. Like, yeah. you, you understand uh, that he was a failed pirate, and, you know, and then you, you actually get a little bit of context with that as well when we go to Marine Ford. You find out that Whitebeard's the one that, you know, took him down a couple pegs. And the thing is, is do you, would you be okay without a Crocodile backstory? Because he's already great enough as is. Some totally characters fine. don't really need a backstory, because you, when you look at someone like the Joker... You don't really need a backstory with them. I mean, Killing Joke is something, but you don't really need Killing Joke, you know? No, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I'd be okay with it. I'm totally fine with it. I think I think there's, you know, a shot at getting something, but I don't need it. Don't need it because the context is there. Now, I mean, like, if people want to... I, I, I mean, I don't know if I, I... I'm sure people in the chat are... You know, bringing up Croco Mom and all this stuff. I do not oh, buy into. God. I, I, don't, I, don't, I do not buy into Croco Mom. I don't buy into it uh, just because it just it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. You know, like Crocodile. Why would Crocodile have fought? This son? It's, in to me, it's like, poison. It's monkey, poison to the story. It's monkey poison. D. Luffy. Like, oh, okay, you have to be Dragon Son. Like, yo, or my son. no. That's no. it's just it's so <laughs> it's just it's poison. That's what it is. Um, Nova member for sixteen months at Best Cross. 
in uh, One Piece YouTube. Uh, Savage, appreciate you. Edward Newgate said you. the uh, One Piece is real. Um, also, do you see Dofi in in the Cross Guild? Only under Crocodile. Yes. Now that, first of all, if you thought the stocks were high now, if you thought we're millionaires before, billionaires. At that point, at that point, we're, I'm richer than Warren Buffett. Yeah, we're we're. I'm buying out. We're, we're on our way to Bezos level. Yes. Yeah. No, we're, we're, we're buying we're, out Elon Musk. Like right, SpaceX exactly. is me and Randy's now. That's where we're at. Twitter, got that. Yeah, got that. It's ours. PayPal, that's it. Got that. All of it. Tesla, <laughs> I'm charging right now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm charging <laughs> right now. We have a supercharger in the basement, bro. We're oh ready. yeah, yeah. We're ready. My whole block is gonna be upset because I'm building a DC fast charger in the crib. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna buy Teslas for all my neighbors. That's how rich I am. I was like, listen, I don't. We live in a Tesla-owned neighborhood. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, imagine. Like, like I, I, I don't see Crocodile coming back. I, I don't see Doflamingo coming back into the story and having a higher bounty than uh, than Crocodile. I don't either. But again, who would break Croc? Who would break Doflamingo out of Impel down? If anyone, it would be the Cross Guild. If anyone. Considering that Crocodile wants to build his company back up, Buggy owes him money, who is someone that he could work with that already has an established system, break out of prison and say, hey, Dofi, you asked me to be part of your crew this time. Now the roles are reversed. Last time, now the roles are reversed. I can get you out, but you gotta work for me. No Flamingo was afraid of Kaido. Yo Flamingo worked for Kaido. Yep. He wasn't top dog. He was an underling. So you can't put an underling above someone who has literally never been an underling in the entire story. Croc stocks. Yeah, Croc stocks, man. All right. I mean, if you buy in now, it's high, but, you know, <laughs> can we get much higher? <laughs> can we get much higher? That's the real question. <laughs> I think we can, personally. I think we can, because I feel like Crocodile's going to take somebody out. Oh, yeah. He, he needs to. He's the real emperor. He's the real emperor. Oh, my goodness. And he's got the Logia. And the hype around Logias is crazy. If you think, I mean, it was even reported in the newspaper by the guy who's talking about the bounties, the Logia user. Logia has a lot of clout. That's why all admirals have Logias. All right. Emil Diaz, uh, Mihawk versus Scopper, Gabon, or Rayleigh, or Sengoku. Oh, so talking about um, Mihawk's feet. Mihawk versus Rayleigh would actually be... I'd be okay with that. I wouldn't mind that. Mihawk... Uh, Rayleigh should obviously lose, but I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what I'm getting at, yeah. Because that... Yeah. Because right now, I mean, Rayleigh would probably be the only person, like, in contention for the title. Like, if I had to, like, kind of... You're like, I don't know. I mean, Rayleigh's still out there. He's not That's active. But... Had to wrestle with it a little bit. Fable, my guy, said, uh, Big 13, how many uh, buggies does it take to beat Croc? Uh, 20... I was going to say 27.8. I'm just thinking with the, uh, the AOE that Crocodile definitely has in his locker. He could take out a lot of buggies really quickly. Uh, this is true. This is true. Forgot about the AOE. Sobless. Sables. A My the favorite Aaron. crocodile move. <laughs> yeah. Hey. And then he's also got Girasoli, right? I mean, that's uh, he, he's he's the AOE king. Yeah, he really is the AOE king. I mean, look what he did to all those um those invading pirates, man. Yeah. At, uh, in Alabasta. If we're not factoring that in, yeah. You know, twenty eight point seven or whatever I said. But if we're factoring the AOE, we might have to bump it. I might even go to like plus a hundred. Hundred. I can see a hundred. Hundred buggies. Seventy is my solid number, but yes. Yeah. Seventy and up. Seventy plus. There it is. <laughs> yeah, are you forgetting <laughs> the muggy bombs? Yes, we're we're forgetting the muggy bombs. I forgot how destructive the muggy bombs are. Well, that's, a, that, that's 70 muggy bombs. Then, you know, maybe it's overkill, but at least we're 
you know? Price is right rules. And then speaking of which, you would think Crocodile's observation observation Aki is high enough for him to do exactly what uh Aokiji and Katakuri did with his low gear fruit. Yeah. Be able to anticipate a punch again, which he probably could have used against pre gears Luffy if he had observation Aki play, hey, you know, water. Well, I'm just gonna dodge the water instead. You know, you would think. Well, I mean, that's more future sight. So I would just say the crocodile doesn't have future sight, but he's got observation. So then would you say Aokiji has future sight based on what, because he did that Marine Fort as well. Aokiji's gotta have it. Cause just, Aokiji just needs to be gassed oh, up. Oh, Kaido has, I forgot Kaido has future sight. He has it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, you would think everyone at that level, yeah, okay, huh. Fair enough. <clears throat> so there was, um. Something about the Cross Guild that's interested me is the bounty system, right? And who, we talked about Momonga, obviously. He definitely has a bounty. Lord knows how much it is. I'm assuming 500 million, but we'll put that aside. The, the guy that Kid mentioned, the guy with the red mark, what was it, the burn mark? Right. Do you remember Kid mentioned that? Yeah. Do they still consider Kuzan an admiral or a marine? That's a question I have to be curious about with the cross gun in particular, because if they consider him a Marine and he has a bounty as a Marine, that would cause issues with Blackbeard as well. And his crew, <laughs> because it's like, mm, so they're saying you're a Marine. They must have information that causes scrutiny. What if Blackbeard was saying the thing that he wants to get is Kuzan's bounty before <laughs> they get it? Because that was released in the news. It was released in the newspaper. They got the newspaper late. If Blackbeard is going to kill Kuzan and he's on the run, See, that'd be that, an interesting a little side plot. I'm not that'd be very interesting. I mean, that would also be crazy if Blackbeard pulls up to uh, uh, Crocodile and Buggy with Kuzan's dead body and just says, "Pay up," and Buggy's like, "I'm broke." <laughs> oh my god and then buggy would, oh that's a whole other war buggy be dead yikes big yikes yeah yeah on that i don't uh i don't know if that's where we're going but that's where that would go <laughs> oh 100 percent. crocodile wouldn't have the money either yeah wait so whose idea was it we didn't figure out whose idea was to, to have those marine bodies out right oh it's totally crocodiles it's totally because baroque works to begin with was a bounty hunter organization Mm, that's true. So this is all this is all crocodile just saying like, hey, you know what? Um I'm tired of the world government. Like you sanctioned me to do whatever you know I wanted to do and then said I couldn't do what I wanted to do. So and you know, I mean that's I you know I have to I have to respect Crocodile a lot for that, you know, in, in, in comparison to some of the other warlords like Doflamingo as well, right? Because Crocodile was doing something that was completely outside of the purview of the world government. Yeah. Whereas Doflamingo had this side hustle, but it was with the world government. Kaido himself was also basically working with the world government. That's why CP0 was there. I mean, they had, they were making the weapons for the world government for the Celestial Dragons. That's why he was getting, uh, you know, he was getting the pass and Crocodile didn't. Getting away scot free, yeah. And Crocodile doesn't have that luxury. So he's like, all right, if they're gonna be chasing me, guess we're gonna chase him back. Yeah, and that's, you know, gotta respect that. <laughs> the funny thing is, Mihawk can take out take out a lot of these Marines that have bounties anyway. So it's kind of like, what if that's his plan to have Mihawk take them out? They continuously claim the bounty. Mihawk lauds over it to to entice other people to go after Marines, make the Marines look weak. So I think that. he's, I he's trying that. to put he's the Marine to hunter the back position. out there. Yes, he's trying to weaken the position of the Marines while putting out bounties. And then propaganding, Mihawk took out this Marine, and Mihawk took out this Marines. All the power was like, oh, well, I want to take out these Marines too, you know? I think the, the, the idea for the Cross Guild has to just bubble up into this entire just revolution. 
where in the final war, it's just, it's going to get to the point where everybody is turning against the world government and everybody's turning against the, the Marines. And once the void history and all of that information finally gets out in the first place, because you already see these like little pockets popping because of Sabo, right? I mean, that's what Oda was trying to show us when he, you know, when we came back from break, frame, uh, Flame Emperor, all of this stuff. Like there are these revolutions that are starting outside of the Revolutionary Army that are opposed to the world government. But now these same people that are part of this revolution can cash in. The tables free have turned. Yeah. It's free real estate. It's free real estate, man. <laughs> it's free real estate. <laughs> One of the best memes to come out of our generation yet. Absolutely. Shout out Tim and Eric. Um, but anyway, man, I don't want to. I don't want to keep you. I know you. You know you got to run. I appreciate yes, you joining the uh, uh, the Croc Summit. I appreciate you standing by through the um, uh, the difficulties. And uh, we've all had our own bodegas. You know, I'm very familiar with it. We fight through it, and we keep going. That's what we do. We fight. We're fighters, man. That's what we do. Right. Uh, we we'll have to. We we'll have to link up at some other time to uh, talk more about Wano. Oh, of course. That's so I do, you know, just as a, a quick little announcement, I do have a long list of streams slash, you know, collabs, I guess, that I need to do because Lord knows making discussion videos is a pain for me. But one thing I do love is talking with the fellow man, the fellow brethren, you know, so Randy will be hitting you up. Just a spoiler alert, everybody. Yes, Randy will be on my channel sooner than later, sooner rather than later. We'll figure out the schedules, but it's definitely happening. We've had the Sanji Summit. We've had the Crocodile Summit. Is there another summit on the horizon? I mean, it's agenda time, so we'll see. I mean, I'll be hosting a VV Summit whenever she comes back into the story. That's of my- Of course. So, you know the Blackbeard Summit. You know, that's that's a guarantee. Oh, that's yeah. a guarantee. Whoever's gonna be there, you know, I said, purposely I'm not inviting the Red Force podcast because, you know, Blackbeard Shanks. Yeah. I, my theory, Blackbeard's gonna finish Shanks. It's, it's over. <laughs> so you guys are in trouble. I'm praying for you guys, but, you know. Well, here's the thing, okay. right? Blackbeard's got to be coming soon. And, I mean, it could be even the next chapter. Because what happened after every act break? Say, ha, 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 ha. That was it. Act He's one, coming. Blackbeard. Act two, Blackbeard. Act three just ended. Blackbeard. And we got Sabo, too. Sabo, Blackbeard. Basically, anything outside the world, Blackbeard will get mentioned or shown. Especially with bounty reveals, too. Blackbeard always gets shown with boundary reveals too. Oh, Mugiwar, you're not ready for the Yonko status yet. Yeah. It's coming. He's got to be, he, and, and he had to have done something that got him up to four bill because there's no way that Luffy's above him right now. Nope, no way. But thanks uh, for having me, man. Appreciate it. It's been a great time, great conversation. Appreciate, you know, the Savage, was it, what do you call your, your gang, the Savage Crew, Savage Gang? Is that yeah, it? Savage Crew. Savage Crew. Appreciate the Savage Crew, of course. And uh, the... Morgeites, I don't know what we're called. I don't know what Morge calls his. Uh, the plushies? His following. The plushies. I guess we're calling them the plushies. <laughs> yes, but uh, much love <laughs> to the JD family. It's been great having, uh, being on here and uh, definitely to many more. Yep. Let's see. And I, I guess I'll end the stream as well. Um, thanks, everybody. I'll see you guys for 10. 59 this Friday at our normal time, 12:15 p.m. EST. All right, we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk then. Thanks, everybody. Take care, everyone. Savage.